made it into a separate head and cylinder. I got the jets here. Thank you. hit the like button. I'm going to need you to hit the subscribe button and ding the bell. I'm also going to need you to do something for me. Big, 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 big time. Leave me a comment in the comments. Also, go over to Johnny's Motorized Bicycles Facebook group. Then you can keep commenting there. You can plug your YouTube channel. You can post videos. I don't care anything. Just, you know, chit chat. I'm, I'm lonely. Heather doesn't love me and she beats me. So we got it in, we got it in like two, three days ago, but I kind of been slacking because, oh man, I'm so tired of doing stuff. We got ourselves a new cylinder. I'm not going to say we needed the cylinder because the other one may or may not have broke. It definitely broke. Uh, I think a ring got caught. Not really sure whose fault, my fault, its fault. I mean, it was running great. It was ripping great. I don't know. It just tore it to shreds. But I was doing a lot of thinking because I was thinking about, you know, after this I want to do it to mine. And then I started thinking, why don't we do what I was originally going to do? Pop the top and put a spacer on it. Move it up to get the durations that I would like. Uh, we're still going to open this up a little bit. You know, I'm going to open up the intake. I'm going to open up the exhaust slightly. Just clean it, really, not really open it. And leave the transfers alone so they got factory niceness. So that is my goal. We are going to start cutting up a cylinder. This is the old cylinder. We still got a lot to do. We didn't do any porting to it yet. First thing I want to do is I want to get the head cut off so I can do all measuring a little bit easier. I'm going to make the head for his new cylinder out of his old cylinder. I will probably also use the bottom to make the spacer. So on this, I want one, two, three, four. You want to be in this, this spot here to make the head right, okay? I want to cut as close as I can to this fin, on this side of this fin. And then I'll sand it down flat to get the head right. But the way I see it, I need it to be somewhere in there. So the closer I get to this fin, the better off I am. Now I could, to be safe, cut it right here on this fin and then, you know, bring it down, but I don't have to cut it twice. And honestly, if I screw up, I got like 10 of these things. We'll start with that. Sound good? Sounds good. Glad you guys are here with me on this. I am loving my little vise that I have from Hobo Freight. I absolutely love it. And I upgraded to an actual hacksaw. Look at this, it's a full hacksaw. Now I'm gonna do it just like I did the other one. I'm gonna make marks. I'm not gonna cut straight down from one side. I'm gonna go around the whole thing and make marks. So when I start cutting, every time I get to another side, my blade falls right into that mark automatically. If you try to cut straight through, I feel like you'll screw it up. I would screw it up. I don't know if you will. I, I will screw it up. Okay, now mind you, this is a very high-end caliper, so not everybody measurements are going to be the same as mine. You have to spend the extra money to get these kind of results. But if you can get yours to work at least as close as mine does, it look like it's about maybe four and a half millimeter. Seems to be the lucky number when I work on things. That's what we're going to shoot for. Okay, spacer is cut off. It is a rough cut. See that line right there? Basically the width, width of this. I'm going to grind all that out so it can fit over top of the cylinder. Once I get the spacer down to the right height, which I'm, uh, oh, that's also what I wanna say. I measured it just now. It's a little thinner in one spot, but for the most part, it's all, it's about nine millimeters all the way around. Okay, my next step though is grinding this out because I don't wanna have to sand this down mill it down and have all this extra material there that's just silly this is going to be an absolute ripper i'm really glad with the way we are doing it i'm happy that we're doing it this way as opposed to the way i did it last time i got good results last time but as you can see we're sitting here again so the results weren't necessarily good what we did good with it and we learned the durations were spot on I'm not going to do the intake port until I attach the diode plate 
and that's not going to be attached until the very end and then I'll grind it all out even. So I made the spacer last night and now I'm bringing it down to the size I need using a file of course but because it's super scientific and the way I do it with my extremely expensive Home Depot calipers I try to keep going back and forth over it taking it out of the vise and making sure I'm staying as level as possible all the way around. Oh I'm not bringing this side down as much because I'd like to keep this as an additional fin. I, I like cutting the fins out and having the fins as part of it because, you know, extra cooling, right? Of course. It fits on here good. It's still too thick, but you see it fits over real good. I had cut these the skirts I cut off of this. They were sticking out here and then all this, when you cut it, it's all in there. I have to mill or grind all that out with my router. I did that, so I ground all that out so it fits perfectly over top. And I will use no base gaskets again, and I will just use some Moto Seal or Ultra Gray, whatever it's called, and be perfect finish, perfect seal, and it'd be nice. But before I'm done, I'll put a bolt through both sides, make sure it's clamped down good, and then I'll make sure that the transfers all match up. Okay, so we did our first cut. We are at about four and a half, 4.8 maybe, I don't know. It's, you know, it's a super high-end caliper. It's not digital. It's got a little squiggly line that's mostly inaccurate so uh, it looks like 4.8 ish we're symmetrical all the way around grinding on this for mica tables like grinding on glass or sanding on it I mean it's uh, perfectly flat it's just an engineered piece of wood it's super flat unless it's got water damage then it is not flat but we are super flat all big gouges are out as you can see clearly on both sides so by the time we get to the the final stage, the 220 grit, we will probably be about 4.5 exactly where I wanted it. Okay guys, let's do our final measurement and see how we did. Because we're not going anymore. Oh, all that work and it's no good, it's way too thin, it's, it's two and a half millimeters. Oh my gosh, I screwed up big time. You've got to be kidding me. I'm going to have to do this all over again. Oh my gosh. Dang it. Look at that. Four and a half millimeters. Gotcha. So if you look in here, can you see that? See that right there? I don't know what you're seeing. I hope you're getting it. See that burr? Same thing on this side. There's just a lip. I knocked that all the way down so it's a nice straight shot. Uh, I still have port match. The actual height of the transfers won't change at all because I'm going to do my best not to actually mess that up and change that. I'd like to get my blow down. I'd like to be 24. 25 in that area so we'll see what I got to do to kind of get around that spot guys can you see in there it's I don't know what you're looking at but I'm hoping you're looking at it see the exhaust I don't know if you could tell by looking at it but see how it's got a slight round and then it goes down and then round again on both sides I'm hoping that will give me two different spots for torque band high revs and low revs first time i ever did it like this normally i do a big radius or just a flat roof so we'll see what happens i think it looks great so i'm hoping that will really give me a good spot for it to hit the pipe maybe we'll call this thing crackhead i'm not sure if you can see it but if you look in there see the transfer down there that's it that's all i'm doing cleaning it up getting the flow a little better Hey guys, I don't know if you can pick it up on here, but do you see the shine? I just literally ran the file over it, which is a flat surface, just a couple times like this. And look at the shine. It is only hitting here and a little here, nothing here or here. So that shows you how unflat these surfaces are and why you need to deck every surface that you're going to put a gasket on or even better yet use no gasket and put the ultra gray or moto seal or whatever you want to use i'm doing this because i'm about to put this on once it's on i want to open it all the way up so it matches this again like i did last time and for that i need to backfill all this with jb weld to make sure this has a good uh, surface because there's going to be a slight gap here because of the shape of it to get it squared and opened up enough that I want. I want this all filled in with JB Weld so there's no holes, no leaks. You know, it has something to grab onto. These are all filled in. Uh, they should be okay. We'll see when I finally get to grinding. 
Uh, I moto sealed it on the JB weld, and then I JB weld. These are the screws, the, the Allen headed screws. I fill the Allen headed screws in. Yes, it does make it semi semi permanent, but this was on another cylinder, as you already know, and I obviously took it off no problem, and and putting it on here no problem. So makes it a little bit harder to do but it makes it a much better seal the problem is is this goes here this gasket and the screws are literally right in the edge here and here you can actually see on the gasket see how thin this gasket is here this is where the screws so you'd only get like a hair when this is all not JB Weld, and you can see it's literally just a sliver of metal and if something's just a little cattywampus it's not gonna seal good so what I do is I fill this in with the JB Weld over the screws, make it a completely smooth surface so it's basically mating on a nice thick piece of metal so you don't get any air leaks. Dial reeds are notorious for air leak. From what I've heard, uh, I've always done above and beyond to keep them from leaking. This JB Weld is not the uh, strong JB Weld, it's the quick weld. It's still strong, 32 or 3100 PSI and change, as opposed to the normal uh, 5400 or something like that. This is more than adequate. It's what I used the first time when I built the cylinder, and it holds. It's not really for holding, honestly. I'm not using it to hold anything on, I'm using it to fill gaps. And it's not as strong as steel or aluminum by any means. It's much softer, but it does do the job very well for what I'm trying to do. Here you go. It's a two-piece cylinder now, guys. So, I would like to say I am definitely taking my building skills to the next level and loving every second of it. I'm very happy that basically I just try. And that's all anyone can do is you just gotta try. And I'm trying. And for all those people out there with the other channels, that say, if you don't know what you're doing, just don't do it. Nobody knows how to do it when they come out of the mother's womb. All you gotta do, get off the bench and try. Break it and try and try again. That's all. Don't listen to those guys that tell you, don't do it, just stick to no motor. Don't do this because you don't know how. None of them knew how to do it. I didn't know how to do it. Just gotta try. That's it. But after a little bit of time, anybody can do it well, even me. So uh, I'm gonna start with the head, get this completely flat and get it right down to the squish band. Then I'm gonna start with this because I have quite a bit of a low spot right there. I'm gonna bring this completely down flat, just with the file, maybe the, you know, the 60 grit, so I know it's a nice flat surface. And I'm gonna see where, you know, our, I'm not worried about the durations. Durations were taken, were fixed with this. This fixed all of our duration. This way I can work on getting everything the way I think it needs to be. I put it together. There is no head gasket, so this isn't exactly accurate yet. But it's close. So I squished it. And it's at one and a half. So with the gasket, two millimeter squish, which is too big, but we're close. Oh, I gotta, before I go any farther, let me measure all the transfers and all that nonsense, right? Okay guys, first, let me tell you, measuring the transfer duration, I, I tested myself to see how close I was getting anyway, because, you know, when it's a solid head, a solid jug you can't see any of the you know you can't look inside the transfer suddenly to try to see what you're doing it just is what it is basically well so I tested myself to see how I was at you know measuring the transfer and to be honest with you I was within one degree of being right so I'm happy that my other measurements are accurate um, but we're not here for that we're here for this so the new exhaust opens at 91, it closes to 71, 180 is the duration. So that's excellent. The old duration was 135 for the exhaust. So we went up 45 degrees, that's great. Uh, I wanted to be much higher on the exhaust duration, get a little more RPM out of it, but I still wanted to retain the bottom end grunt, which I think we're going to achieve very well with the exhaust shape. 
So uh, the transfers, the old transfers opened at 127, closed at 233. The duration was 106. They now open at 111. They close at 252, and the duration is 141 degrees. A little higher than I would like. I honestly would have liked to have had it around 125 to 130, but is what it is. I didn't ramp the piston at all for the transfers. I didn't raise the transfers at all. That's stock, whatever it comes out at, but it's just with the spacer and what have you. The blowdown, it started with 16 degrees of blowdown. My goal was 20 to 25. I like to stay around 20 to 22 personally with the YD100. I hit it on the button with 20 degrees of blowdown. Phenomenal. Now I can get that up a little bit more, which I still might do. I don't want to take away the pump though, because I still have to bring down the top of the jug a little. I showed you the part I squished. It's like a little over a millimeter with the gasket in there. It's going to be about almost two millimeters. So I definitely have to bring it down more. And I think because I have to bring it down, I'm going to end up having to take this fin, cut it off like I did the other one, and then sand it down is what it is. That's fine. No big deals. On the plus side, we're going to fix the squish. And the exhaust is almost completely open. It is about 0.5 of a millimeter, half a millimeter of the exhaust, I mean the, um, the piston sticking into the exhaust. So it's completely open. The transfers are completely open now. Look, before the transfers open, duration, this is as far as they open before they went to shut again. You see that? That's nothing. Now, completely open transfers. And if you look right here, so you see how much is left right there? I mean, it's, it's you know, what is that? Millimeter maybe, if that. So I still gotta bring it down. That's why I don't have enough left here to make that much disappear. Because when you put this on, you want the piston to go up there into the squish band, that shiny part going around. So I definitely gonna have to cut this off and bring it down a little bit. But not a big deal. Quick little file work, quick little sanding job and we'll be good, but I do have to take in consideration the gasket. She's gonna be a little ripper. I can't wait to put this thing on and crank it up. So I'm gonna get working on making another head gasket anyway, just in case, but this one is uh, all done. I got it pretty decent. I made it out of the copper. It came out pretty good, I think. Um, I put magic marker on the top just so I know which way it goes while I'm working on it. It doesn't affect it in any way. It's all right, I got another one I'm starting to make over here. Uh, I don't have tin snips, so I just grind it out with the uh, my small end mill type bit. Yeah, so that's it. For the first time ever doing this, I think everything came out really, really well. Heidi ho, neighbor. Okay, we're very close, guys. About to start assembling. This is the head. I screwed up the piston. This hole is like too high, a little too wide overall. Oh, here is the spacer. Nothing crazy, just a little something. This is the cylinder. You can see, probably see, see how crooked the uh, intake is, but I made the hole straight. I don't know, whatever. Exhaust port, pretty good. We are golden. Guys, real quick, I just want to show you something. I'm sitting here filing on us for a little bit already. Look how it's still shiny here and still shiny here, where they always seem to leak, but look at that. Filing it here a little too. Shows you how not flat it is. File or deck if you have a lathe, but file your stuff, guys. Get it smooth. Because honestly, if I really want to, I don't even have to put a gasket on this. Because I know it's good. Oh, I didn't show you yet. We are back together, baby. Look at that. You can barely tell that I took a fin out there. Basically, I took the fin out here and I put it down here. So, I think it looks great. I can't wait to fire this thing up. I am beyond excited to start this bike. Be beyond. beyond excited. Okay guys, you are on my chest mount. We are tuning the bike. I finished working on it yesterday, came outside. I threw it on the bike last night in crazy fashion to see if it would work like 10 o'clock at last night, you already know, 
cut the cylinder in half, made it into a separate head and cylinder, raised it up. I got more ex uh, transfer duration than I want. Um, at this point though, I'm not going back into it. It makes it way more mild by having the raised transfer duration in this instance, at least from what I'm finding out. And I want to keep it mild because I don't want the kid going, you know, crazy fast and killing himself because he's a little bit of a numbskull sometimes, we'll say. So um, he's going to get a smaller sprocket, which will of course speed it up. But all in all, uh, that's where we're at. So I got a 38 Pilot, smallest one I have. Uh, the air screw is about one and three quarters, so we're okay-ish. Um, the main jet, I have it, the needle at, I think the fourth spot down, and I have a hundred jet in. This is the first time starting it up with the hundred jet. Let's go see how she is. I don't know. Oh, turn the gas on. Yeah, gas is on. We got to warm it back up. I had to go get the camera. I had totally forgotten to bring the camera out with me, but let's see how it is. Still four stroking. Only thing that I don't like about these carburetors, not well, not the only thing. One of the things, the main thing I guess I don't like about these carburetors, outside of you have to learn how to tune a carburetor, is the long throw on the slide. Like you gotta twist it all the way to get it all the way open. adjusted to where we really need it we will take it for a cruise I don't want to take it for a cruise obviously until I get it adjusted or at least closer to adjusted where I need it so uh, all right I'm gonna turn you guys off whoopsie let me turn you guys off oh, that's not good. I gotta redo that now that's coming out that was my stupidity uh, I'm gonna turn you off and I'll turn you back on when I get it in um, but I got the jets here. I got all the sizes I need. Even if I had to go really low, I got them all now. So, all right. 